This all began about 30 years ago when, believe it or not, I was working as a chef uh, in a kitchen in Oxford. And it just so happened there was a young man who uh, applied for a job in the pot wash in those particular days. And he was a 17-year-old boy, and it turned out that he went to school at Eton. And I got to know him quite well, and he invited me to, uh, to his school. They had a very special day on the 4th of June at Eton. And it was there, that on the playing fields of Eton, that I met his father. And his father turned out to be a man called Tim Lusty, Dr. Tim Lusty, who was the head of the Oxfam Health Unit in those days. And Tim had just come back from Somalia, where Oxfam were having a particularly bad time running their supplementary feeding program. And the problem was this, that in those days, the European Economic Community used to donate free butter oil, flour, sugar, and dried skim milk powder to operational agencies. All this stuff would be unloaded at the port, and then it, Oxfam would then have to find transportation to take all of these ingredients to the feeding camps, which were out in the rural areas. It's very difficult to do this because the trucks were in short supply and there was a lack of fuel. It's very difficult logistically to organize. And then when they got there, it was even more difficult to use all these different ingredients to cook up a particular kind of porridge that they needed. Uh, there was also the problem of uh, uh, firewood, very lack of firewood at the time, so that, that was a problem. Fuel was a problem. And even when they did make the, uh, the porridge, there was a problem with uh, hygiene because of the lack of clean water. And so Tim Lusty had identified a very particular problem there. Uh, but it also identified a solution, and, uh, and the solution uh, was to try and incorporate all these ingredients into a high-energy biscuit, which could be produced beforehand and stockpiled and then flown out to the, the emergency in question. And that would get over all the problems of uh, hygiene and logistics, lack of fuel, and so on and so forth. And it turned out that he thought that I was part of that solution. And he turned to me and said, look, you, you know, you're a chef. Can, can you help us bake this biscuit? Can you develop it? And I said, well, you know, I'll have a go. And so I uh, contacted a, a friend of mine, uh, Helen Young, who was working, uh, when well, in fact she was studying food science and technology at the time. And indeed, that's the, the same Helen Young that many of you will know as Dr. Helen Young, who's now a, a director at Tufts University. Um, and we developed this biscuit, which was really shortbread, in our kitchen over a period of two years. And you know, over a two-year period, we, we got something that was, was pretty good. It was a little bit oily, and uh, when we took it to Oxfam, they said, look, you know, this is looking good, but we're not sure about the shelf life, and it, it's, it's, it's running a bit, it's a bit oily. So I contacted United Biscuits, uh, who were a, a major biscuit company at the time, and they let me go uh, and work with their product development team for a week. And we developed a really good biscuit at the end of that week. So I took that to Oxfam and they said, look, you know, this looks really cool. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian famine had uh, just started. That's the big famine in uh, 1984, 1985. And I was sent out by what was then called the Overseas, Overseas Development Administration to, to Ethiopia. Um, to uh, monitor food supplies. And I got uh, a, a, a little letter from, from Tim as I was out there. And I was based in what was then the worst affected region, which was uh, Wallow province. And about 7 million people affected by the, by the famine in those days there. And he said, look, you know, the, the, you know, the biscuit's on its way. Look out for it. And so one day I was up at one of the big camps, a place called Coram, which is, uh, was the biggest camp in, in Wallow at the time. And I remember uh, meeting Save the Children Fund there, and uh, I asked them whether the, you know, the Oxfam biscuit was, was, was there, and, and indeed it was. And so there, you know, the, the, the development would take place. Um, Oxfam had um, uh, manufactured 500 tonnes of this, and it was being distributed um, to malnourished children uh, in supplementary and uh, therapeutic feeding programmes. And so at that point, the biscuit was being uh, disseminated. And since then, of course, the Oxfam biscuit uh, 
It's, uh, I think it's now called the OB125, and as uh, 500 kilocalories per 100 grams is, ha has been manufactured uh, wide scale. It's been distributed in, in camps all over the world. So if I think about the uh, experience that I had with the, with the biscuit and think about what lessons are applicable for today, I would say that one of the most important things is being able to think out of your own comfort zone, I suppose and think out of your own traditional terms of reference. And so Tim Lusty had come to me, uh, someone that worked in a humanitarian agent. He came to me as, when I was a chef. Uh, when I couldn't get the, the, the recipe right, I decided to, to go to United Biscuits, you know, with the, the, the private sector, to get help from them. Uh, and so I think it's terribly important that people who are involved in innovations, when things get a little tough, try and go that little bit further, make the stretch to look outside of your own comfort zone. And I suppose the other thing, and I suppose uh, th this goes for ele every element in life, really persistence is an important thing. And so it took us t a couple of years really to get this recipe right. And so persistence pays off. <laughs>